Hi, I want to share with you an amazing teaching. The idea here is that we can only, now remember what I'm saying here, it's an extraordinary teaching. We can only be good people if we have the Jewish God. What does that mean? So, for example, there was somebody who was an ex-terrorist and he said that the only way the Muslims will stop being murderers if they get rid of Allah. And I could never understand what does that mean, get rid of Allah. Allah is God. In my mind, Allah, God is telling me to give charity. But that's the point. You see, if you read the Quran, Allah tells you to kill people. Now, again, this is coming from a, a his name is son of Hamas. He grew up in that environment. He was a terrorist. He knew what he was talking about. The point is that something that I've come to realize, three things. Number one, if you don't have God, you have no power above you. And Margaret Thatcher said that a person without religion is a slave to their passions because ultimately, sure, you may know to diet, but you don't. You may know to exercise, but you don't. You know, may know to save money, but the average American is $15,000 in debt. So the point is, what you know is in your head. What you do is usually in your heart, and your heart is instinctive. Why do I eat chocolate candy? Because I like it. Do, should I be eating it? No. Do I know that I shouldn't eat it? Yes. Do I do it anyway? Yes. Why? Because I'm an idiot. <laughs> it's simple. That's what people do. They do idiotic things because the heart, instead of the head, is running them. Now, of course, our goal in life is that the head should run the heart, but you can't rely that a human being will do that. And the less input there is into the head, the more the heart takes over. And so that's why the Bible, many people don't realize that, is not a simple document. It's the most transformative document that ever hit this planet. And all the great historians say that. Why? Because the first time that a document came in that said, and listen to what it says, it's very, very deep. It says, you are good enough to be good. It's a very profound concept. There are other documents like the most ancient, what they call kind of code of, I wouldn't call it ethics. It was more like a, uh, like a, like a law. It was called the Code of Hammurabi. So it said like if you were a builder, and you built a bad, I don't know, uh, building and, 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 and um, I don't know, it fell down, like they could kill your son. So it was very, very savage. But the point is it, it had this kind of thing, which is, okay, you got to like behave because, you know, we have to keep a civil law. But the Bible says something different. The Bible says, I, God, know that you are good enough to be good. And this is what it takes to be good. Honor your father and mother give charity, don't take revenge, don't speak badly about people. In other words, this is a conversation between a moral God and his student. And only if you take upon yourself, because ultimately if you're doing things because you're afraid of punishment, well, when you're not afraid, you won't do them. But only if you take this serious, and this is a very important thing, the God of the Bible is not only the Jewish God. He is the God of all of humanity. And a lot of people don't know this. When God came to the Jewish people, he gave us not only the written word, but the explanation of that word. This is a very big subject. I don't want to go into it. I just want to stick to the point. That explanation was taught from master to disciple. They used to teach the students 100 times every law. Everything was memorized. It was called the oral Torah because it was done orally until it was written down by Rebbe about the year 100. He was a great friend. I think his name was Marcus Aurelius, who was a um, emperor of Rome. And the laws were written down. And Judaism is very much about the laws. Now, there are seven laws that came from God, six of them to Adam, one of them to Noah. They're called the seven Noahide commandments. We are all the children of Noah, and therefore we're all obligated by God. When he gave the Bible to Moses, he gave these seven laws. They were written down by the greatest codifier of Jewish law, the Rambam. And these are the seven laws. Do not worship idols. Do not curse God. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not murder. Do not eat. 
an animal while it is still living and have a justice system. And so therefore, of course, there are other things like goodness and kindness. If you think you should do something good, go ahead and do it. So in other words, this is a basic structure that God obligates you. Now, that's a very beautiful thing. A lot of the times in the West, we're so busy trying to take away obligation. I just saw this great video from uh, Dennis Prager, and he goes like, you could either have a painless, empty life or a somewhat challenging full life, but you can't have both. And so it's much better to challenge yourself and say, no, I can be good. God is the God of the world, and he does talk to me. He does want me to be my very best self. And so that's a very beautiful thing. And so therefore we have to wrap our heads around the fact that life is not a random accident. All these kind of evolutionary theories really behind it all is one idea. And that is they want you to not take responsibility. Oh, you're just an animal. You don't have to take responsibility. No, you are a godly soul. You're not an animal. An animal can't be spoken to. It can't change its behavior. You can. And you will do the right thing because you're good. No other reason. No reward, no punishment, just because you're good. It's a conversation between a moral God and his moral child. Good luck. Make the world and yourself a better place.